welcome to the Nurturing Coach channel. I'm Sarah Squires, aka The Nurturing Coach. And today I want to talk about something that crops up a lot when working with parents who have a hostile or narcissistic ex to try and co-parent with. And it's how do they manage their child's anxiety, particularly at handovers and during the build-up to going to that parent's house. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Hey everyone, so anxiety for children is such a hard thing to see happen because it feels very out of control and if you suffered from anxiety as well, it can trigger your own response because you know exactly what they're going through you know how uncomfortable it is for them and so it can be really difficult when they start expressing um anxiety for you to know how to deal with it so this video is going to provide you with five useful steps to help you with that process so the first one is it's really important that you identify whether or not that anxiety is coming from you now I say that because children do pick up on our emotions, even on a very subtle level. You might think you're keeping it together, but actually there might be changes in your behavior, changes in the tone of your voice, changes in your just your basic energy, and they will pick up on it. They're like little receptors, they just pick up on that. And so really, really do work on whether or not you're feeling anxious over this. It is natural that you would, but it's also really important that you learn to manage that properly because they don't need that. And they, if they feel something, obviously they think it's theirs. Their the children are very egotistical. They are very much about themselves and they internalise whatever they are feeling they don't know that they've picked that up from you they're naturally empathetic and so they've picked it up from you but they think that it's theirs and so it's really important that you learn coping skills not just for you in that moment but also you're modeling that to your children so the first step is to identify is it coming from you if it is coming from them then the second thing is to not to try and eliminate what is causing their anxiety but had to help them to manage it you can't eliminate what causes children's anxiety if they get anxious going to school you can't just say fine you're not going to school then we have to learn to manage our emotions and so it's very easy to go into that rescue mode and want to be like well they're anxious about it so they don't have to do it when actually that's not teaching them life skills because there'll always be things that come up in life that cause us anxiety and um that kind of nervous feeling when we learn to manage it then we feel empowered to try new things if we don't teach our children how to manage those uncomfortable emotions that that anxiety that nervousness then they'll never step out of their comfort zone. They'll never want to do anything. They'll never take risks. And if they don't take risks, then they don't grow up. And whilst that can be tempting, it doesn't help them. They need to learn to do those difficult things and learn how to manage them. So again, going back to the first point, if you're modelling how to manage your own, you're teaching them how to manage theirs as well. You can say, this works for me. I do this when I'm feeling a bit nervous or a bit anxious. And you can help them do it with doing that themselves so the next one is avoid labeling for them and this is this is hard because you recognize it and you think oh god they're, they're clearly anxious and so it's really tempting to say i know that you're feeling really anxious about this or i know that you're really nervous what actually is more beneficial for the child is for you to be able to say how are you feeling about whatever it is that they're feeling anxious about um, so, for example, if they are displaying these behaviours before going for contact or to, to spend time with their other parent, rather than say, I know you're anxious about going to see your mum or going to see your dad, say, how do you feel about going? And allow that conversation to happen naturally. What that does is, is it gives them the space and the freedom to 
really get in touch with what they're feeling and to voice that as well which is really powerful for children because that probably isn't happening in the other house they're probably not being given the chance to explore their feelings and they will be having their feelings labeled all the time and so for you not to do that you are giving them skills in helping them to identify their own emotions and so it is really important that you ask those open-ended questions rather than a more leading question of i know you're feeling something um, or why are you feeling anxious even you're still labeling what you want is that open conversation around how are you feeling to allow them to really dig into what's going on the next one is some kids do experience separation anxiety this is usually as a result of their attachment and that might be to you or might be to the other parent and so it's important that you identify is it separation anxiety is this only happening when they're being separated from you these particular set of behaviors and if so there's things that you can do around that you can certainly reward them for every time that they do do it you can encourage them to use the skills that they use when they went through it before really help them to build their confidence because they can get through this they can manage it and so every time you are there at the end of that that's what secure attachment is it's not about not being separated from you or from anyone it that's an insecurity if they're feeling they can't leave you that's an insecure attachment what you want is a secure attachment where they can feel confident in leaving and then they want to come back and they might feel anxious when they realize that it's not you that's come back but actually they're okay with you going it's how they greet you when you return that's how we measure attachment and so it is really important that you promote that secure attachment by encouraging that that separation <coughs> excuse me and the final one is honestly if it persists if it is something that you are really really struggling with and you've tried those things and it's still not working do get help a lot of children do struggle with anxiety and it can it can the anxiety itself can become the monster rather than the thing that they think they're anxious about it can become anxiety itself and so it's important that if you feel that you, maybe you're not the best person to deal with it or that you have tried do get help for them like i say anxiety is quite common amongst children and certainly in um, children that have got separated parents because really the whole environment is quite anxiety inducing and so don't feel that you have to do all of this on your own but again it comes back to that first point of make sure that you've got a handle on this because when you know know how to do it and what works for you you can try those things and if they don't work then obviously you can get help as you would have done for yourself if you were struggling with anxiety and you tried everything and it and it didn't help you would have got that support so I hope you found that useful. There are lots of other things you can do and I am, I will be covering them. I am in the middle of writing a workbook to help with some of these things. So I will be releasing that very soon. Um, but if you are struggling yourself with anxiety or just want, want a bit of advice, do reach out. Um, you can either comment below and I will get back to you or you can um, connect with me through my website at www thenurturingcoach.co.uk. Take care everyone and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!